Last week, it was reported that Russia and China will join in a military exercise with 10,000 combined troops in mid-August. Now, this comes on the heels of the United States admitting it needs to change how it shares information on the battlefield because last year we suffered a dramatic loss in a simulated war game in which we failed to stop China from invading Taiwan. And now experts warn there are fears that China could spark a World War III after they boasted the United States would have, quote, no chance of stopping an invasion. Our military has been the butt of jokes lately after reports the Navy is more focused on being woke than they are on military preparedness, and our Army unveiled a bunch of new touchy-feely and sensitive woke recruitment ads. To discuss all this, I want to welcome China expert and author of The Coming Collapse of China, Gordon Chang. Gordon, welcome. So let's talk about that a little bit. There's, there's, there was, you know, it's kind of funny, ha, 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 you know, the woke military, but then we go back and in that war game, that simulated war game, we wouldn't have won. We wouldn't have prevailed had that happened, have China go ahead and, and gone into Taiwan and we try to defend Taiwan. Your thoughts? Yeah, we haven't won a war game with China for years and years and years. And it's not just the Navy, it's the Air Force, it's all the services. And, and that's for various reasons. Um, China right now is rapidly building up its forces. It can concentrate them. And we've got worldwide responsibilities. But also, we've got deeply troubled Navy, which would be the tip of our sphere. It, not only is it woke politics inside the Navy, over years, the Navy has developed a risk-adverse culture. And so a lot of people are worried that they can't fight a war, much less win one. So there's got to be sweeping changes in the Navy. And it starts right at the top with a series of admirals who really can't fight. Well, sir, let's talk about what's going on. And it's very concerning that you say the weak link in the chain is, is the Navy, especially what's going on in the South China Sea. Please tell our audience, and I know a lot of people understand what this is, but China literally built islands offshore. So they built up these islands, and, they, and they're specifically for their military. Am I right? Well, certainly. And, and that was a failure of political will on the part of the Obama administration. We did not defend Scarborough Shoal of the Philippines in early 2012. And what we wanted to do was to avoid a conflict with China. Well, what we did was we empowered the worst elements in the Chinese political system by showing everybody else that aggression worked. So right after that, they started to reclaim those artificial islands you talked about. They pressured other Philippine features in the South China Sea. And then they enlarged the conflict or area of uh, engagement by going after Japan's islands, the Senkakus, which the Chinese have a claim to, um, a weak claim. But nonetheless, what they've been doing is they've been making the problem larger for us. And that's a failure of political will um, in the White House. So we got problems in the White House. We got problems in the Pentagon. I mean, I don't know where do we begin. Uh, so, so talk to us a little bit about this recent, uh, I don't know, hookup between Russia and China. That's a... You know, when I talk about scary, I think that should scare the bejesus out of most people. Of, of, the, of the two countries that could likely do, do the most damage to us, given a conflict, you're looking at China and Russia. What happens if they do get together? Well, they would be certainly a fearsome combination. And it's not just China and Russia, Eric. It's also their terrorist and their um, rogue elements. So you talk about North Korea, Iran, Cuba, Venezuela. You know, you could have a problem flare up in, for instance, the East China Sea. And clearly, the Russians would try to take advantage of that by pressuring eastern Ukraine, for instance. Or Iran could go after Israel. North Korea could go after South Korea. This could easily become a global conflict within moments of the initial engagement. One of the, the, the weak links, let's call it, in, in the China military uh, chain would be energy would be oil, would be uh, the, the, the various ways of, of supplying the, the energy to their military forces. Russia is flush with oil. What a scary, scary team to be fighting against when they have the, the numbers of China, they have the nukes in Russia, and then they have the, 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 the oil to, to, to back this whole thing up. I mean, it, it seems like an unstoppable force. Well, I don't know about unstoppable, but certainly very fearsome, because you have both China and Russia for many years now, have been exercising their militaries jointly. There have been ex joint exercises in the South China Sea a couple of years ago, for instance. But also, it's, it's more than just the formation of a working partnership between the two militaries. It's also you've got Vladimir Putin and Xi Jinping view the world in the same terms, and they view the same adversary, which is us. 
So they are closely coordinating. And so we have to assume that they would form a coalition against the U.S. in the case of conflict. Gordon, I have about 30 seconds, 40 seconds or so. Do, do they have eyes on the prize? Do, do the Russians and the Chinese together or separately have eyes on, on turning the United States into some sort of quasi-communist dictatorship? I don't know about the Russians, but the Chinese do. They incited violence on our streets last year. That's an act of war, Eric. And we have yet to impose costs on China for trying to overthrow our government. Okay, and it's not just about the economy. I know they want to be number one. They, they, they definitely want to be the world's premier economy. They're not there yet, but that would make them happy. And maybe destabilizing us through war would be the way to do it. Final thought? Yeah, Xi Jinping, the Chinese ruler, actually talks about ruling the world and the near parts of the solar system. And we say, no, he can't mean that. But yes, he does mean that. All right, we're going to have to leave it there. Gordon Cheng, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Eric. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.